That's better. Hi, Anna. <laughs> Is, have you seen Ben? Hi, Tom. Hi, Donna. How are you? Very good, thanks. Good. Oh, how's, you. your, how's your summer going? Very well. I finished an online summer, summer school course. Oh, wow. So, Already? You finished it? Yes. Holy smokes. Now it's the second half of summer school. So, so I don't wow. know. Wow. Oh, good. What class did you have this, this, um, endocrinology? Wow. Biology class. Wow. Online? That sounds hard online. Well, no, everybody survived, did very well, too. Oh, good. Very good. We had lots of did... online discussions of articles that they had to read and make video presentations. Wow. Very good. I gave Ben the link again this morning. I, oh, good. I hope he gets called. Joins in. us. Calls in. Yeah. I think I, I sent it out last late last night again to the people. I think he's in my Cincinnati distribution list, but. Um, I don't think so. Oh, yeah. I think so. Yeah, he's in the Google group. Oh, okay. So he's in my, uh, my, my, the Google groups that I send it to. Oh, here comes somebody. Hello, welcome. Hello. Hello. Oh, is that Ben? Yeah. Yeah. This, could be. this is Dave Evans. Uh, uh, area code 303 is Dave Evans? Yes. In Colorado. Dave Evans. Ah, oh, welcome, Dave. Thank you. Have you been with us before? Uh, on one or two early ones. But oh, okay, great. I've been involved with the World Federalist Association since the 19, well, for about 50 years. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Terrific. I just didn't know your name. Uh, my name is Donna Park. And uh, so far on the call, we also have uh, Bob Hurd and Ben Ermston. Hi. Hi, Ben. It sounds like something is blocking your microphone. It's hard to hear you. Yes. Uh, something is also blocking my vision. Oh. Well, maybe is there a piece of paper anywhere near your computer keyboard? Or your laptop. Hi. Oh, good. We already have a number of people. Yes, we do. Um, Ben's having trouble with his um, vision and his uh, microphone seems to be blocked. We're not sure why, but I we see you, Ben. Yes, we see you. So we can see when your mouth moves <laughs> and when you laugh. Hi, Lee. 
Hi, Ron Gloss of calling in. Hi, Ron. Welcome. Well, glad to be able to join you. We're slowly gathering here. For those of you on the phone, so far we have um, Bob Hurd, Donna Park, Ben Ernston, Bob Flack, Gail Hughes, Lee Davis, Dave Evans calling in from Colorado, and Ron Glossop. Oh my, who is that? Is that you? Uh, yeah, please mute your phone if you've got noise in the background and it's good to mute it anyway when you're not speaking. I can't tell who it is. Maybe it's Ben. <laughs> yes, I mute it. I mute it then. Okay. I think it's. So, Ben, there is something coming through, a voice of a woman speaking. So, do you know how to mute your phone, Ben? Mute your phone if you know how. I just, I can mute you and unmute you. So, if you just, I can mute you. If you wave your hand when you want to talk, I'll know to unmute you. <laughs> if you don't know how to do it yourself. Up, oh, up, oh, you're talking. Go ahead, Ben. I didn't hear you. I see a black flag that says join a meeting. Well, you're in the meeting. I'm in the meeting. Uh, uh, Dave, is that Dave? Dave Otten, maybe? Because there's no... Um, that might be Dave. It's only one day that we know of. That's true. There's David. Well, there's Dave Evans from Colorado. Dave oh, Evans, you didn't. Did you join by a uh, computer as well, Dave Evans? No, I'm on uh, phone only. Okay. My guess is that's Dave Otten. Dave Otten is someone who often joins two ways. His computer uh, doesn't have video but it lets him see us. We can't see him. Yeah, I can also but you, see him. So. Well, it's 11.03. I think we should get underway. Um, maybe we could start with just briefly introducing ourselves again. Most of us know each other, but not everybody knows everybody. And maybe say something about one thing that strikes you from the book that you remember from last time, now that you've had time to think about it more or something regarding follow-up. So I'll start, I'm Gail Hughes, and I'm a board member of CGS, and I'm the coordinator for the book club. Um, I am struck by how much we have done regarding follow-up. We created some questions for presidential candidates that spun out of our discussion last month from this. So I think that um, this is a productive group. Ron, do you want to go next? Okay. Um, I think that uh, Ron Glossop from St. Louis, Missouri, I think one of the most impressive things in the Planet Hood book for me was the fact that that has Appendix 3, uh, The Anatomy of Peace by Emery Revis or sometimes pronounced Reeves, and it has to do 
with a book that was in 1945, the most widely read book, and in fact, in very much uh, supported by Albert Einstein. So Appendix 3, The Anatomy of Peace, I think is a very important part of the Planet Hood book. Um, Heard? Yes, I'm Bob Heard from Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yes. And we're looking forward to using lots of insights from Planet Hood next semester at, at Xavier University. Aha. Uh -huh. um, awesome. Donna? I'm Donna Park in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I'm currently the chair of the, um, the board of Citizens for Global Solution Education Fund. Um, and I want to pick up on something that Gail said is that we did get a lot of work done in terms of we developed questions, but right now there's nobody carrying that forward. And um, so it's kind of one of those balls that has uh, that I'm maybe I'm juggling, but I'm juggling too many balls. So maybe I would love to see if we could figure out how to move forward the stuff that we've done. Um, since the last meeting. And second of all, regarding what Ron said, um, I, we didn't talk about Appendix 3 at the last meeting, and I agree with Ron. I thought it was excellent and really interesting, and uh, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind talking about that a little if we had time today, since we didn't talk about it last time. And I also think today we should you know, talk about the future. I wanna make sure we save time about future book club sessions. Right. Um, by the way, I sent two um, two messages to everybody this morning, earlier this morning, so that you'd have the info at hand. I know some people, you know, to, to, so you wouldn't have to look around for something that was sent in the past. And um, one of them was a list of books that we had considered, you know, it's on our list for future possible discussions. Um, Bob. Yes, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, my name is Bob Flax. I'm currently on the board of CGS. Uh, as of a couple of weeks from now, August 1st, I'm the incoming executive director. And I was not able to um, join the book club, you know, the last session we had. And I'm embarrassed to say I've had Planet Hood sitting on my shelf for like a decade and finally started reading it. And I'm... Um, I'm kind of shocked. I mean, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, I, I'm not that far into it, but it has so many, for me, what struck me is that so many, like I, I was going with the yellow highlighter over all the kind of the one liners that I want to use <laughs> in my, in my talking. It, it's got so many very pithy points that is said very well, both in the text itself and in those sidebar quotations from, you know, Douglas MacArthur and blah, blah, blah. So right. I'm just, um, you know, I, I'm just seeing so many things that I could not only put into my talk, but other slides that I could add to the uh, slideshow that we have. So, um, so yeah, so I'm very excited to see what the rest of it holds and um, kind of getting over my guilt of having waited so long to read it. Um, well, I just wanted to say one quick thing dovetailing on what Donna said about the questions for the candidates that... Um, that that I I have in, in another committee uh, another meeting taken responsibility that once the questions are done once they're formulated and ready to go um, I will be the one sending it out to the candidates and telling them those that are still surviving <laughs> by that time and um, and uh, let the, letting them know that we will post their answers on the CGS blog you know on our website. So, uh, so as Donna said, we need someone to fill the gap in between uh, to make sure they come to completion to then hand it over to me. Um, I'm leaving tomorrow for a two-week silent retreat, uh, so I will not be able to do that part of it. I'll be gone. So, um, so anyhow, so that's me. Thank you. By the way, I attached the list of questions to one of the messages that I sent earlier, earlier this morning. Did you get the final list out of the Google Drive? Uh, oh, no. It might, what I sent might not be the most 
recent then? I could, yeah, uh, we did finalize the questions, Bob. Oh. Those are done. Oh, but great. the next step, the next step was going to be somebody to draft a letter to accompany them that then you were going to finalize or something. So maybe the whole thing just waits for you. That'd be okay. Oh, okay. I, I didn't realize the questions were done. No, I'm happy to do that. Um, I could take care, you know, when I get back, I could take care of writing the cover letter, basically, to accompany the questions. Okay, excellent. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so mission accomplished. <laughs> awesome. Father Ben? Awesome. Oh, fa Father Ben, would you? Uh, I'm Father Ben Erbson, and I'm in Pontiac, uh, Michigan, and uh, I have in front of me can, can you speak closer to the microphone, wherever it is in the computer, because it's very difficult to hear you. Thank you. All right. Can you hear me better? Much better. Much better. Okay. Uh, I have in front of me, uh, I hit the uh, uh, link that uh, said uh, uh, we, we've got a, a Zoom uh, meeting, and... Uh, uh, I saw my picture for a little while, and then uh, it, it disappeared. And I have in front of me, host your own Zoom meeting. Get your own account for free. Uh, and I gave them my email address. In other words, my I can't see anything, but I can hear people but I can't see. And I uh, very much like uh, the email uh, that I uh, got and the two attachments as part of the uh, email. Ben, you could try Alt-Tab. Do you know how to hit the Alt key on your computer and then Tab? Maybe that would pop up another window where you can see all our faces. The Try alt, alt, key. The alt key, hold the alt key down and then hit the tab key. And, and every time you hit the tab key, it will take you from one window to the next. You could just be trying that while the rest, while we're continuing. Okay, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't see the Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, Dave Evans? Go ahead. Don't bother with. Um, All right. We won't. Dave Evans? Dave Evans? Dave Otten? Dave no, oh. Dave Evans. There's Dave Evans There's in Colorado Dave. on the phone. Okay. I'll wait. Dave, can you Dave hear Evans? us? Dave Evans? Dave Evans, can you hear us, Dave? He's not on mute. My phone is muted. Sorry. Oh. I, I want to make a comment about changes that I think have occurred that are important to World Federalists, since I've been a World Federalist for 50 years. Uh, I first met Ron Glossop at uh, Milwaukee and when we stayed room together in a uh, university dorm. Anyway. Uh, Federalists have advocated for years, uh, uh, global world government, a federal world government. Uh, it, 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 of course, is run up against the sovereignty issue. People don't want to give up sovereignty, particularly the United States and back then the Soviet Union. What has changed is is no longer a question of world government versus sovereignty, uh, but China ruling the world versus uh uh, a, a world government. Uh, China's population is four times the size of the U.S. By the time they get to the point where they have GDP one half per capita of the U.S., they will have total G GDP that is double the U.S. and a defense department that is double the U.S. By the end of this century, they may have a defense department, a GDP and a defense department that is four times the size of the U.S. China can rule the world at that point in time. So the options uh, are not so much the loss of sovereignty, which will occur, but um, uh, world government versus uh, China denomination, uh, China domination. Anyway, that's my comment. 
to Dave Otten. Hi, I've um, been on the national board for the last couple of years of CGS, and I've been on the St. Louis uh, board chap uh, in the St. Louis chapter for about 30 years. Um, I've always been interested in Ben Ferenz and his book of Planethood, uh, first because of his experiences uh, as a Nuremberg prosecutor, and part of my doctorate is in Holocaust studies, so I've always been interested in the Nuremberg trials. And then also because of uh, the experiences of Nuremberg led uh, uh, Ben Ferenz to the idea of the International Criminal Court, which I think is a stepping stone towards a uh, what we've been advocating with World Federation. And I mentioned last time uh, on our conference call that uh, um, I had been able to introduce a, a recent film about Ben Friends called Prosecuting Evil. And I hope all of you uh, uh, have heard, had a chance to see that by now. If not, I think it's on Netflix if you have that available. Uh, it's a documentary about his life going back uh, to his childhood and then to his uh, history as a uh, prosecutor at Nuremberg and then ends up with his um, how he was a, a strong advocate for creating the International Criminal Court. So I hope everybody gets to see that film. That's it. Lee, Lee Davis. Hi. Um, I live in Orono, Maine. I've been uh, chair of the CGS for a while and um, the what I wanted to say about the book I think is that I occasionally found the little um, little quotations that are in the, throughout the book um, sometimes annoying but overall they were so good that I have to for, forgive the, the the layout of the book and and I was particularly struck recently when I was looking through the fifth chapter, or the fifth step, it's called, Make the UN Effective for the Nuclear Age, by a quotation from Einstein, which just struck me so uh, immediately. He said, the United Nations is an extremely important and useful institution, provided people and government realize system toward the final goal. I thought that's such a good way of putting it. That's all I have to say. By the way, um, Debbie Metke sent a, well, she compiled all of those quotes, and it comes to yeah. several pages. And I sent that in one of the messages that I sent to you earlier this morning. So it, 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 the title is Leader Quotes, What Leaders Say. So thanks to Debbie for that. Yeah. Jean. There's somebody. Yes, Jean. Jean is from Minnesota. She's, are you with us? Can you oh, hear us, Jean? Hi. Uh, no, I'm from Wisconsin. And, oh, Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, Wisconsin. and I wasn't at the, on the beginning of the call, so I didn't quite. Are you just introducing or if you yes. yes. comments about the book? Well, um, oh. okay. Um, well, I, I don't have a background like most of you do. My, mine is totally different. So I'm, I'm just truly interested in this topic it's, uh, and, and what's going on. But um, I love the book. But now, as I hear you speak about China's population, and I can just see that there are going to be all kinds of complications um, that... Maybe it won't work. I don't know. I feel I feel really kind of overwhelmed by the situation and um, wondering what people think about uh, what is her name, uh, the candidate who's running from Hawaii because she's taking on um, world politics as is no, Bernie Harris. Sanders. Is that? Is that uh, no, 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 no. Um, she's the, the one who was in military. Um, oh, I know. Uh, Tab, Gabby or Tabby or sounds like Gabby Gifford, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I know who you um, mean. Yeah. Um, 
I, I think she'd be a good person to send this information to and maybe have a conversation with her. She and Bernie. So I'm just. How did you hear about our book club? Um, through Christian Life Community. Aha. Uh -huh. And Jean, yeah. Jean has been on the call several times, right? Jean, oh. this is Donna Park. Yeah, I and I, I was on during the previous book too. Oh, but I right. Know that I'm going to stay on much longer. Yeah. I, I, I really have enjoyed what I've experienced. Yeah. But, and but our, Jean, also, I, I just want to say our our community, our community, it's Christian Life Community. We are um, an NGO to the UN, and so I thought this would be an important. Um, thing for me to look into. No. Uh -huh. And also, G, G, this is the gene who has worked with us to have us send 20 copies of Planet Hood to the Christian Life Community National Assembly, correct? Yeah. yeah. So, Wonderful. and in fact, that's, that's one, of the, one of the outstanding actions, if we could get somebody to agree to what we really could use a cover letter to accompany the book to go to the CLC National Assembly, if anybody has the uh, time and energy to get that done, uh, but it has to be done by Thursday, because that's when it starts, July 18th. Wow. Um, by the way, I, um, as a follow-up to the last meeting, I, sent, I said that the discussion was on our website, but then I found out it wasn't on our website, but it is now on our website. So um, anybody who missed the call, uh, notably Bob, I guess, uh, if you want to hear our discussion from the last mm. time, it is available Thank on you. our website at this time. So, and another thing is that the book itself is available for free on PDF, I understand you can just, I suppose if you do a Google search, you can bring it up for free. Is that right? Well, I don't know if you could do that, but right now there, I think Janet put a link on our website to it. Uh-huh. So, um, to it. we, we hit, we've had a couple of boxes. I mean, a lot of copies of this book that we're distributing and have distributed and also it's available on the internet. So, this is something that could be a, an important resource for CGS, it seems to me, for to, to attract new people and tell them about what it is that we're, we're about. Yeah. Um, just, just to throw in, if we still have a surplus, I, I could take a carton, because uh, you know I had 30 people at the Rotary yesterday, and they would all have taken one if I had it, and I'm going to be, I'm going to continue doing talks like that to groups. So, um, I'm happy to uh, take a truckload. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good. And it is still available on Amazon also. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two versions of the book. There is um, the 1988 version, which is the original, the small blue book, and then the, um, the red and blue book that has an introduction by Ken Kesey. He was a well-known um, fiction writer. So that he helped to attract more attention to the book. And they're virtually the same, but the page numbers are different. So if, if we want to refer to something on page so-and-so, you need to tell us which version of the book you're talking about. Okay, well, um, how shall we proceed? One thing we want- we Well, want wait, to wait, sure wait, 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 wait. We don't know who area code 414 is. Oh, I thought that was another- That, that is me, that's Jean. I, I'm viewing oh, you on the top one, and I'm speaking to the bottom one. Okay, thanks. So we want to make sure to discuss um, the um, future books. I, as I say, I sent a copy of the book list that came from, well, it's a summary of what people listed as what they're interested in from a survey that was distributed. Um, building a World Federation, the Key to Resolving Our Global Crises by Soveda Mani Ewing will be, that's scheduled for next in line. Um, Soveda will be able to join us to 
um, to give a, a short talk about her book, but she can't do that on the next scheduled date of August 10. She could do it in September. September 14 is the second Saturday of September. I might have a conflict that day, but that doesn't mean you couldn't go ahead without me. Or if um, the week after that, the 21st, is agreeable to everybody, including Saveda. Anyway, I think it would greatly enhance our discussion to have the author there. Saveda, by the way, is a board member of CGS, if you don't know. So, and she's um, a member of the Baha'i community. So, um, her book is available through Amazon. Um, I can't remember the price. I have not gotten it yet, but it isn't terribly expensive. So, $10, go ahead and get the book. It's also, uh, it's also available on Kindle. I, I downloaded it to my Kindle. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, and this is it, by the way, what it looks like. Donna Sack. Donna. Uh, Gail, if you're not going to be there September 14th, and I, I'm not available September 14th either, we oh. either need to uh, uh, decide who can run it or maybe move it to the 21st. And by oh. the way, the 21st is the UN International Day of Peace. So kind of an interesting day to have a book club talking about how do we get to peace. Is there anybody here who would not be able to attend on September 21st? I probably cannot. I'll ask Suveda whether September 21st is a possibility for her. And if it is, then we'll plan on that date. No, Unless somebody else can, can facilitate on the 14th who, who can't be there on the 21st and wants to keep it. But whatever. But I, right. we well, just I'll need to know a, who's going to be in charge. Yeah. I'll send out a, a message, but just from those of us here, it looks like that would be, that would be this September 21st would work. Um, but I'll send a message to everybody so everybody can weigh in. Yeah, and, and I'll just say if for logistical reasons, there's a preponderance of people who could make the 14th and not the 21st, I, I could facilitate the 14th. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so just great. you can Thanks, keep, keep me keep me in the you know in the sidelines if that's a better date for the majority of people. Sure. Excellent. Do we know if Savannah can make it on the fourteenth? We know if she can make it on the fourteenth. We don't know if she can make it on the twenty-first. I didn't ask her okay. about the twenty-first, and I might be able to make it on the twenty-first, but um, I'm not sure that I will. So that's why um, I just wanted to sound people out for regarding i mean i might be able to make it on the 14th so um anyway um in terms of books after that we might want to consider the book after Saveda's so that we can be looking ahead enough to you know those of us who want to start reading in advance um are there well by the way, there is something posted about Saveda's book on the CGS website. And also about um, Joe Lennon's and Andreas Bummel's book, A World Parliament, Governance and Democracy in the 21st Century, that's posted on the CGS website. And they are, Andreas in particular, um, has had a lot of connections with CGS. Um, so that has been one that has been suggested for something in the near future. Um, nominations for books that would that will follow that like the book that will follow Zavedas. Um, Donna Stack. Donna and Bob Stack. <clears throat> so CGS has been um, supportive of the um, Global Week of Action for World Parliament uh, for, a for quite a while. And um, in fact, we are one of the co-hosts of, of the event on social media. And, and so that's what Andreas's book is really about, I believe. And if the, you know, I guess if we're going to be in October, it could be something that we say we're doing to support the Global Week of Action 
in October would be to discuss that book. That's just a thought I had. Bob. Okay. Yeah. Well, just to, to throw it out as an idea, we can certainly continue forever, you know, going book by book, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, but I, I also want to suggest a couple of other ways to, to conceive it if you want to. One is um, to, you know, since we're doing Saveda's book next and she's a board member, we can look at doing, you know, all reading the books of the board members and friends. So, you know, Ron Glossop's book, which is excellent, uh, you know, Andreas's book. So we can kind of start with that and fan out. That's one way to think about it. Um, another way, which I already suggested in the past, is reading them chronologically. So we could see how the ideas developed over time and what happened at various times. Um, you know, in, it would help us in understand the development of World Federation. So that's a possibility. And lastly, I've also suggested that we look at the parts of, of the movement that we know the least about. Uh, there's a lot of good writing by, by people who are not kind of in the inner circle, uh, but it wouldn't hurt to know about them. So we could look at the folks like Glenn Martin and, you know, other people who are not in the, you know, like the inner circle of, of, of our gang. So, uh, so anyway, so th those are just some other ways to think about it that I'd like to offer. Thank you. Dave Stack. Dave? What are we going to do for August? Oh, well, um, we could skip August or if we have... Right an idea to, as to what to do with August. Uh, uh, we had thought that the book club would meet either every month or every other month, depending on the book and circumstances. So we're not committed to having a session in August. Okay, that's fine. Are there suggestions for August? Take a month off. Yeah. <laughs> or or use it to read Soveda's book. <laughs> There's an idea. That sounds good to me personally. But <laughs> yeah. Anybody want to propose something else? Dave, did okay, you have anything no, uh, in mind? Dave Otten? No. I was just oh, okay. We're going to do month by month or every other month. Another thing, um, uh, as far as a suggestion, is rather than do a whole book, uh, we could do chapters of longer books. Um, of course, the book Planet Hood and Saveda's book are short books, so that's fine. But if we get into a longer book, we might want to do just a few chapters each time. Donna Stack. Donna? So I, I like what Bob said. I, I prefer, uh, I like Bob's idea of reading books. Of, of, uh, I guess I propose let me just, that we read the next book is that we read the Andreas Bummel, Joe Linen book about that because Andreas is a friend of ours because we do support the idea of a world parliament and because we could, I mean, I was thinking it's too much, it's probably too much to read the whole book. So putting together Dave Otten's suggestion, we could just read part of that book and discuss it in October, and it could be part of what we do for Global Week of Action this year. And Ron Glossop has a comment. Ron. I, I like that suggestion because it will give us an idea about what's going on right now. Uh, an advantage of having um, Andreas, as with any other board member, is that we can, ha we can ask them to participate, and that, I think, adds an additional depth to our discussion. Yes. Bob's there? Bob? Yeah, and let me say, if we do use his book, um, it's ideal to read just a section. I, I use that as one of the textbooks for my, my, co my new course in World Federation, and, and a lot of the book is kind of a critique of what's wrong with the world today. I mean, all the things that are breaking down and all the global problems. So they're not as much about World Federation, but really kind of building the case for why we need one. You know, what are all the problems? So, so that part, if you just want to read about the history of World Parliament, all of that part could be skipped over. 
not that it's not valuable, but it's it's not specifically focused on World Federation. I, I will warn you, it's not the most well-written book. Um, it, in part, uh, it could be the translation, um, but it's kind of choppy and fragmented. Um, and it just, it's, it's not an easy read. It, it's kind of challenging in, in that way. But, you know, if we read only a part of it, there'll be less challenge. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's my take on the book. Thank you. Well, Bob, so you're familiar with the book because you use it as a, as a textbook. Yes, yes, um, yes. Would you be able to suggest um, an appropriate um, excerpt for us? Yeah, yeah, well, I could say which chapters, um, I mean, it's kind of obvious just looking at the table of contents, but, uh, but I, could, I could certainly pinpoint the chapters that go through the history of the idea of a world parliament in the current work being done. I mean, yeah, that, that's easy to do. I mean, anybody could do that, but I can certainly do that. And then if we have Andreas or Joe and or Joe join us for the session, uh, they can kind of fill us in regarding main points that they want mm -hmm. to emphasize that we haven't necessarily read. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I like that idea. Um, I also like Bob's idea of um, kind of doing a chronological um, order, but maybe after we, we have Andreas's book. Mm -hmm. um, Bob had mentioned the Yonkers mm -hmm. book as a seminal one, is that right? Yeah, yeah, the, the Juncker book, the idea of world government, he essentially does what I just suggested. It's, it's kind of brilliant. In one chapter in, in his book, he goes through the history of the movement and he mentions the seminal books that happened, that he, you know, in the books in the 70s, the books in the 80s. So his, his would be like a cliff note. So, it would, you know, if we went that way, the chronological way, I would suggest reading his book first, that'll give you an overview of all the literature and stuff. And then you can go back and read the specifics. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that, that, that's a multi-year project if you really want to do it right. But it's, it's a fabulous endeavor. I mean, it, it, it's all right there. And he does the best job that I've seen uh, of summarizing all the books. And certainly, you know, if, if we read his book first, then you could decide which other books then we want to read. We may not want to look at all of them or only chapters within each, but that would give the best kind of cliff notes overview of all of the main literature. Um, yeah. In, in the movement. So there, I mean, he probably didn't include everything, but he did a great job. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, so are you thinking of that for, for, um, like October or after Andreas's book excerpts? Uh, were you asking me? Yeah. Oh, I, I wasn't calendaring it yet. I wasn't thinking oh. that far. I was just saying, if you want to go in that direction, I would yeah, suggest uh -huh. the Junker book first and then the others after. Yeah. Uh-huh. But yeah. first after we get through Andreas, uh, after Correct. we do the October, after Correct. Andreas. Correct. Right. I, I have a proposal. I, I'd like to know if those, I would like to suggest that we empower the W, the world. There is a group in CGS called the World Federalist Institute. And um, several of the people on the phone call are a member of that steering committee. And I wonder if we should just empower them. Like, I wonder if Bob Hurd wants to hear all this discussion about what books we're going to read, or if no. he'd rather that be discussed offline and just brought in, you know, and, and then we could say, well, here's our recommendation and get feedback, but rather than have this discussion here, would people rather we do it offline and just bring the recommendations here for approval? Okay, I, th I think we're finished with the discussion anyway, and um, okay. we, we won't be able to conclusively decide because we'll need to, you know, bring it to the, the broader community and the WFI, you know, I can tell the WFI what we discussed and our recommendations and then they can, um, they could come yeah. up with their own recommendations or 
confirm what we've done or what, whatever. So I make a comment on Father Ben Ernst. Uh, I think we're losing sight of the fact that uh, there's an election uh, before us, and uh, we want to get some material uh, to the candidates. We want to get the word out. Uh, uh, about the issue so that at least uh, there's a, a beginning discussion of uh, the very important idea of how, how we can be safe. What's the best way for us to be safe? Um, Donna, Donna would like to reply. Mm -hmm. Ben, we haven't lost track of that. We, we agreed. At the, we, we are moving forward. Bob, when he gets on board as our executive director come August 1st, is going to be doing two things. One, he's going to be sending our questions to the candidates and explaining that we're going to put their responses on our website. And two, we also have a cover letter ready to go to the candidates to accompany planethood out to them and so bob also will be doing that in august so we haven't lost sight of that we're still going to do that well, good. okay well now as yeah, far and let me if i may just add to that sure. that um I, I believe in this other committee where we discussed it i don't remember which one at this point um that we're also going to send an email to our membership and, you know, the, all the folks on our list saying, you know, when you show up at town hall meetings of these candidates, when you write to them, when you speak to them, um, here are questions to ask them to focus their attention on our issues. So we actually do have a campaign plan, both to the candidates directly and to our you know, members and supporters and subscribers as they interact with the candidates. So that is all scheduled to happen. Great. Yeah. yeah, we should, Bob, we'll put this on your do as soon as possible list. Yes. So as far as follow up to the book, other than that, ideas, what ideas do you have? Implications, action items, Mm. Anything, Donna? Well, I'm feeling a need to reply to Jean um, because to her sense of uh, concern and, and, and also to help her understand what I think Dave Evans was saying about China is that, is that it, it isn't that this solution doesn't address China. It, it's that it's another way of saying we need to move forward before non-democratic forces take over the world. We need to, to get the democracies of the world to push for a democratic federation of nations. So I don't think Dave was at all saying, you know, you know this isn't going to work. He's just saying this is a, a, a new way of pushing this idea versus 50 years ago when the, when the movement first started. Um, so I just felt a need to say that to Jean so that she doesn't feel so frustrated and concerned and I don't know. I don't know well, if that helps, Jean. Uh, Gail, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Oh, uh, Jean, did you want to reply? Oops, sorry. No, I was just saying thank you. <laughs> oh, I, I would argue that we don't have a democracy at present. It's the U.S. that's been the world empire. And um, yeah, so I, I know, I agree. China ha is now emerging as a replacement for the U.S., but one of the obstacles, a main, a major obstacle to uh, Democratic World Federation is, in fact, the U.S. at present. Yes, that's why we're here. That's what we're working on. I and see I David see David Lionel joined us. <laughs> David Lionel has joined us. David, uh, <laughs> greetings. Uh, we, um, at the beginning, introduced ourselves and said something about, um, like, something as a takeaway from the book or something regarding implications or something. If you want to briefly say something to uh, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm David Lionel. Can't hear you. 
on David Lyon. Now, usually that's not hard to hear me. I, and uh, I'm a uh, educational video producer. So I have felt all along that this movement very badly needs a way to, uh, an interest in and a way to outreach to a larger public, which I feel has been no serious effort made about that in all the I've been involved, very minimal effort in that way. So I wanted to provide these audiovisual materials that would enable people to get the very complex ideas quickly and simply. And I've done that and I'm still doing that. And uh, so I uh, would like my work to be of service to that project of getting the message out to a much wider public, especially in the context of this UN 2020. And there seem to be some new players in the game. Uh, UNA UK sounds good. And uh, the Global Challenge Foundation, which might bring some much bigger sets of money to bear to this that whole project of getting the message out to a wider group. So anyway, that's what I'm involved in. Uh, Bob Stack? Bob? Yeah, just a quick question, and I apologize because I didn't make the first meeting. I, I wasn't clear. So far, we've done three quarters of the hour talking about logistics, administrative stuff, and things around the book. But so I, I, I'm not clear. Were we supposed to talk about the book also, or are we, or did we finish that at the last meeting? I'm just not clear. I, I thought the whole hour would be, or most of it would be about the book. So I'm, I'm, I just don't know that we, we have so, you know, yeah. So what are we, are we talking about the Sorry, book as well? I, yeah. I wanted to make sure that we knew what, what was going to happen for the next meeting. And then that just went longer than it should have, I guess. But anyway, yeah, we're, we're supposed to be discussing follow-up for the book. Um, we, but it, but it was mostly follow-up from our discussion, Bob. We did discuss mostly the whole book, except oh, okay. the appendix. Okay, great. So and, this and is the action. Scheduled... That... Okay. I'm sorry, yeah, go ahead. This was, this was follow-up on, on what we spent a lot of time talking about the book and then what we should do. And so we scheduled this to finish that follow-up conversation. Great, thank you. Thank but you. I that... think Gail's yeah. been saying, does anybody want to say anything about new about the book? But nobody has offered anything yet. Gotcha. Except yeah. So as far as follow up of implications or action items, um, I think, you know, much of it was the questions. Did you, did you see the questions for presidential candidates and do you have comments about those? Now this, what I sent might not be the most recent version that's on the website, however, but there. The question would be, how would we get these questions to actually be asked of these presidential candidates? Uh, hoping for that on the debates, I guess, would be too elaborate, though there's probably a mechanism to submit questions. Uh, yeah, we, we, uh, David, I could, I could speak to that. We, we, we worked that out. We're doing two things. I personally am, am sending the questions to each of the candidates with the cover letter, letting them know that we're going to post their answers on our website. That's item one. Item two is we're sending it out to our mailing list uh, and asking all of our members when they're at town hall meetings, when they write to candidates, when they call in, to dog them with the same questions and to keep these issues in the forefront. So those are the two things we're, we're planning to do currently. Thank you. Are you sending the questions to the media, like to the New York Times, the Washington Post? That no, kind of I can. No, no one's thought of it before this second, I, but I can do that. Yeah, I mean, last, last night, I w somebody sent me um, a video of, and I think her name is Tulsi Gabbard from Hawaii. Oh, and yeah. She gave a, a very interesting um, uh, interview, and I thought, now there, somebody who does media, you know, who they, they could be asking these questions. And I, I'm looking at her and, and I, I see from her interview that once she spoke, more people responded to find out who she was than mm. almost any other candidate. So, mm. yeah. It, she's quite good on this uh, war piece and it tends toward our kind of content, but as usual in the national discourse, this is just not there. Uh, U.S. 
uh, issues in U.S. running the world is much more the norm and where people think, you know, all the candidates are used to that way of, and if they go much past that, they're going to get into potential uh, deep water. They don't know. It's a very undefined. The U.S. relation or subsumption into some larger body is touchy politically. But the, the group that you talk about, that you have already is one of the projects, that instant answer thing, right? The truth group, isn't that one of the things? Yeah, I, I was just going to talk about that when you're done. But yeah. which should have you a list of who to send media to send things to. And that would also, this package of questions, I think, would go very well to them. Yeah, hey, Bob? Bob Stack. Yeah, yeah uh, what, what David was referring to, and thank you, David, uh, for bringing that up. We have one, one of our nine or so programs, uh, which is planned, but it still hasn't fully gotten off the ground. And if anybody here wants to join that, it would be great. Uh, it's, it, it's our breaking news rapid response team. So since, as you know, every day you turn on the news, whatever, and there's stuff that we could be responding to and nobody knows our perspective. So the idea, is that we have a group that when any, whenever anything breaks in the news, that, that something could be very quickly over the next day or two drafted and with the push of a button, because we've already got all the addresses in, um, sent to all the newspapers of record, the New York Times, the Washington Post, blah, 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 you know, to all the op-eds, and also sent to the main independent media um, blog sites, things like Truth Out and uh, Reader Supported News, et cetera, et cetera, and to any other outlets, media outlet, the you know Associated Press, whatever, so that we're constantly there, uh, you know, as an alternative drumbeat to the chaos and craziness that's already out there. So if anybody is interested in being part of that, please let us know. Um, like I said, we we officially formed it last November. Uh, that group so far has produced a, a single uh, response to the idea, uh, you know, the, the notion that Pompeo put out about revoking the, uh, the visas for the investigators from the ICC coming to, uh, to the United States to look at our war crimes. So we did a response to that. Um, but that's it. We only got one out and we want to get them out like, at, you know, maybe once a week. So uh, I see Donna's hand up. I'll, I'll yeah. yeah. It, it is, that is the group you keep saying you forget what committee we discussed it in. That was the group that, oh, that finalized was the, group. the questions. So Great. the second thing they did was to finalize, they worked together with the leadership of WFI to finalize the questions oh, great. for the candidates. So. Great. So they did twice as much as I thought. Thank you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes, of course, it's yeah. not gone out, though. Right. Um, I had suggested that a longer term agenda would be to um, to modify the questions to make them relevant for other candidate candidates at other levels, you know, like mm. um, local candidates and that kind of thing we could. Um, so we I think this will be a great resource. Mm. Donna. Donna Sack. So I have two things. One thing about the book, two things about the book. Um, uh, the, to discuss if people are interested and if we're ready. I mean, one is that he has in here his, um, it starts with the, uh, your ultimate right and insist on your ultimate right. And he says our ultimate right is I have the right to live in a peaceful world free from the threat of death by nuclear war. And when I read the book, I felt like it would be good if we would expand that to um, because it seems it seems like that I would like to say you know I have the right to live in peace, um, but also on a, a healthy, sustainable planet or one that's not an environmental crisis and where human rights of of all are protected by international law. I don't know. I felt like I felt like I wanted to add to that. I felt like that was written for the world that was really understanding nuclear threat. And now most of people are more worried about the environment than they are nuclear threat. Not that I don't, they should be anyway. They're both concerned. I wondered if anybody else had that reaction. Yes, I did. Excellent point. 
I agree. I felt By the way, way, I see that Jim Barton has joined us. Oh, Hello, Jim. Jim. Hi, Jim. Hello, Jim. Good to see you. I don't see him. Yeah, he's, he's just joined. He's on he's mute. He's there. Um, Jim, do you, could you unmute and introduce yourself? And if you've read the book, say something about your thoughts about it. Yes. Um, let me know if you cannot hear me okay. Gotcha. So um, I read the book in the summer of 1989, and it uh, kind of changed my life. I've told a lot of people this story before. The summer of 1989, two things were happening. One, the Cold War was ending very rapidly, which meant that we could think about what we were going to do with our massive resources if we weren't going to destroy the world. And the second thing is that climate change was emerging rapidly as an issue. And it, it seemed to me like a no-brainer that uh, uh, the world would come on to a new project of rediscovering the UN and saving the world. Um, that did not happen. The climate movement did not emerge for another 16 years. Um, I discovered a few years ago that Benjamin Ferenc also changed my life. Uh, 13 years before that, when an anti-nuclear activist, one of the first people to get arrested on the issue of nuclear weapons after the Vietnam War ended, gave a talk and she said, we demanded a jury trial for a trespassing charge, which is kind of funny. And, and we had a Nuremberg lawyer fly out from New York to Seattle to testify at our misdemeanor trial. And that really struck me because it seemed like an uh, uphill thing they were doing to talk about nuclear disarmament when nobody else was, and that a Nuremberg lawyer actually took the seriously. Um, and that was, as we can tell now, the beginning of the massive anti-nuclear movement. Um, so my video just went weird. Let me know if you can't hear me. Um, as a result, I handed out about 100 copies, or maybe 50 copies, of Benjamin Ferenc's book between 2010 and today. When I was in Washington, D.C., with a stash of 300 books, I gave them out very liberally, uh, mostly to younger people. Um, I always put my name and address and phone number and email at the beginning, and I never got a response back. So this is important feedback. Um, this, my handing out the book in the summer of 2016 was assisted by the fact that as, I don't know if Tad Daly's on the call, but as Tad Daly pointed no. out, that Benjamin Ferenc had a long article on the front page of the second section of the Washington Post about his million dollar donation to the Holocaust Museum. And when I was in DC, I would ask people if they'd seen that article and a huge number of people would say, yeah, I kind of did see that article. So there was a hook uh, for a discussion. So I, the book really turned me on in 1989 and it has not grabbed any of the 50 young people I gave a free copy to. And um, I think we need to talk about that. And, and I think it's partially generational. Greta Thunberg of Sweden, the young woman who started the junior high and high school climate strike in which, I don't know, maybe a million high school students have participated in countries all around the world is almost like an analog to our global day of action for a global parliament. She has been successful and taken off. She'll be visiting New York, by the way, in September, uh, in a way that hasn't happened with us. So I could say more, but that's probably a summary. Thank you. Good, thanks. You seem to have this set in a rotating uh, system. You could probably push a button and we would just be listening to the person who's talking each time instead of rotating, which is what we're doing now. Not rotating. 
We're not rotating. What are you talking about? The image is coming on the screen. I'm looking at that. Well, you, well, you yeah, can uh, change it to you can change it to gallery view. I can. You can. In the upper right corner for me, you can where it's you can click on gallery view. Yeah, well that's easy. So okay, well, okay. Bob Stack. Bob. Yeah, uh, just to go back to um, what Don has said about the questions and, and updating them, you know, that, that to me seems like a, a perfect WFI project uh, to bring that list of questions into current times and make them relevant now with the additional problems that are on the world stage right now. So I just want to suggest that if anybody wants to bring that to WFI, that, that strikes me as like a right on the bullseye for something they can do. Thank you. By questions, what questions? Do you, do you what are you talking about? Steps? I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, not the questions. The, uh, the you know the rights that we have to not live oh, in a the nuclear. Mix, the yeah. right, right. Yeah, the right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It's yeah. one. Yeah. It's one statement. It's one statement. It's, oh, it's one statement. One. Okay. Well, that um, could be updated. My point is that could be updated. Thank you. The book. The book lists eight steps to world peace, and that's the first one. So, and I'm thinking. Um, for you and there are others who weren't at the last meeting, book meeting, um, a, a kind of brief summary of, the, of our discussion. Gail, there's an echo. Is anybody yeah. hearing an echo? There's a yep. horrible echo. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that Is that, my, is that my echo? I think you. If you mute you all the phones, that could get rid of it. Oh, wow. Everybody's echoing. Okay, I'm going to mute all the phones, and if you want to speak, you'll have to unmute. Let's see if it, okay, there's no echo now. I wonder if it was our last addition to the phone call. Um, that was the problem. Um, so, so, I thought I would just re try to re Re refresh our memories about our discussion from the last time that we said that okay well we had some questions for discussion Bob did you get those or anybody else who wasn't on the call mm -hmm. um, there were several questions um, one was just general responses and the general response I would say was what we've already noted that this is a great resource for CGS in providing an overview, you know, just basic, the basic idea and, and um, kind of motivating people to, to get involved and, and to be active. Um, well, except for what Jim just said, it doesn't work for young people. Notice the age of those of us on the phone. Well, that's, yeah, that's to be further determined though. I mean, um, Oh, wait, Jim, Jim, can you unmute yourself? Do you want to talk, Jim? Yeah. yeah, I did want to talk about my experience tabling with young people once in 2013. Oh, okay. And the other a month after the uh, anti-Trump uh, inaugural. And uh, both times I would ask young passersby, uh, would you like to talk about global democracy? And everybody stopped to talk to me, unless they were walking at a stride that indicated that they weren't going to stop for anything. So that intrigued me. That's a good opener. Do you want to talk about global democracy? Then I'd give a, a brief wrap on what we were about, that we wanted to make countries more like counties and elevate the individual, elevate the global government. And one line that I used worked really well. I asked young people, have you heard of the Koch brothers? Those are the two right-wing millionaires who are alive today who are funding a lot of right-wing activity and gerrymandering. Their father helped found, I explained to them, that their father helped found the John Birch Society for the purpose of smearing the UN. And that was a great line because it worked as the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Young people hate the Koch brothers. They don't like their father by extension. And if we could say their father hated us, we go up in their estimation. And 
I found that 90% of the people who would talk to me, nobody stopped talking to me after 10 seconds. And usually I'd stop after two minutes. Um, gave me their, their email and phone number, which I may have somewhere. So what that says is the book didn't turn people on, but young people are intrigued by the idea. And I also have to note that my reading of the psychology of young people, and it probably includes everybody on this phone call, is that when you're 18 or 22, you want to hang out with other 18 or 22 year olds. It's an extraordinary young person that would join this phone call and come back for a second time. And that probably includes me at that age. So that's why it's important for us to create opportunities that have a lot of young people at once. And we, we kind of did do that globally in 2013 when uh, Becky Luff and Florencia Gore and Nick Christie and Oded and Shimri all came together in sort of a friendship group that has lasted and blossomed. Um, thank you. You know, I'm thinking it may not be that the young people didn't like the book. They may not have read the book mm -hmm. because I don't think people read books as much as they used to. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think we can conclude that they were turned off by the book or anything like that. And the, the consensus among this group is that this is the best book we can find for an introductory kind of overview of what we're trying mm -hmm. to communicate. Mm -hmm. Donna? Um, two things. One is um, I would like to say something about Appendix 3 as well as Dave Evans' comment because I think Appendix 3, the um, anatomy of peace that Ron was referring to and Dave Evans' comment fit together. But also I see we have a new person on the phone who hasn't introduced himself. Oh, Ross? Yeah. Um, oh, I, I apologize. I thought this thing starts at noon but I guess it was noon no Eastern, Eastern time, time not Central <laughs> time. So I just joined in. I'm, I'm sorry, somehow I didn't uh, see clearly the, uh, the announcement. Well, uh, yeah, uh, well, I'm a long-term member of CGS in Minnesota and uh, United Nations Association uh, for many, many years. And I've just been very active in uh, projects that uh, relate to, quote unquote, making a better world. In particular, my focus has been on the sustainable development goals, in particular, goal three, six, and 17, and one, which is poverty, health, water, sanitation, and global partnership. And as a part of that, we are creating uh, an effort to end childhood malnutrition and improve maternal health. So the new arrivals on this world that young women make uh, uh, would be healthy and not so malnourished and so deprived in cognitive ways. So it's empowerment of the individual, I guess, uh, no matter what their economic uh, situation is. So we, they, no one gets left behind. Anyway, I just want to make a comment of something I heard that I think Jim said about how to win support of young people. I like the idea, and it's almost important, essential to have the young people be part of it and you know take the banner and march on. And that's what they're doing in climate as they're beginning to recognize that their futures are in jeopardy. And then, you know, uh, again, uh, there's a tie-in with these sustainable goals. But one thing I have a little hesitation for the strategy that Jim mentioned. I guess I'm a Gandhian in a way. One should not speak, you know, use the negative of human traits as a way to kind of win uh, compatriots. Uh, I, I, you know, we... There are just so many ill things people do, but we should not be judges of it. We should just be moved towards kind of creating a better world by having strategies that are absolutely positive in all ways, because you can always have somebody else later on 
kind of pick on you and, and start, you know, creating this. Uh, and uh, Trump is a perfect example of that. He's doing it all over the world on everybody. And so I, I just uh, wanted to bring that as my, uh, you know, perspective, point of view. So, anyway. I said more back. Bob? Uh, but no, let, let the fellow finish. Uh, you were oh, mid sentence there. Oh, sorry. Oh, he was done. Oh, are you complete, sir? Oh, me? Uh, yeah, well, I guess so. I mean, we can keep talking, but I'm, I'm happy to stop. It looks like you have something to share, so go ahead. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I, I just wanted to say um, what, what Jim said triggered an, an, a couple of ideas as, as well as some things that other people said. So I'll, I'll, I'll run through uh, a couple of them quickly. Um, one is, is just to point out, uh, you know, someone said to Jim that, that that book is the consensus book about the best intro. Um, I'm not part of that consensus. I haven't finished the book yet. I, I still give out the Yunker book uh, as the best intro that I've read. So I just want to be, be clear about that. Um, next, uh, you know, we, we've had a, a numerous discussions, um, you know, about what will attract young people to the movement. Most of those discussions have not been had with any young people included. Right. Uh, so I, I think we, we should actually uh, take that on, and I'm happy to do that myself, um, as, as an organized discussion about what uh, attracts young people. I think it's brilliant. I mean, what, what Jim just did about giving little anecdotes about moments of connection, I think that's so important to do. I mean, that, that's like the data that we need um, maybe they're just one off and they'll never replicate. Maybe, you know, it will resonate and we all had a similar experience. But I think it's, it's good to both, both look at from the adult perspective of what were the moments that we had with young people that connected, as well as from the young people perspective and hear it from them as well. So I, I think that's a, a conversation uh, that we've had many times in little snippets, but it's, I think, long overdue. Uh, to have it in an organized way. So I'd, I'd like to say that and then do that. Uh, so I'm putting that on my to-do list. Um, next, I think an impediment to the book, honestly, is the age of the book. It's 1991. Uh, people pick up a book, they go, oh, it's interesting. They open it, they see, oh, this is old. Period. End of story. It's old. You know, and, and they're, you know, you can't get beyond that. And, and certainly with... Um, uh, you know, with the how the way information is just exponentially, if not more so, getting more. You know, people just don't look look at those things as relevant if it's more than five years old. Even five years is a long time now. Um, so, so I just want to kind of throw that in. It's kind of a a, a, a super obvious thing. Um, another one, I I I I think this is this is an unfortunate fact of life that I think the same. You can have ten people delivering the same message, and the delivery is so important that I've seen, um, you know, I mean, um, I, don't, I, I, I won't name names, but I've seen people at CGS meetings and WFM meetings year after year coming back saying the same thing. And then I, you know, and no one responds, but what they're saying is brilliant. It's the delivery, you know, it's like <laughs> Carvel said to Clinton, it's the delivery stupid, you know, instead of the economy stupid. So some of that is, is personality, some of that is format. You know, uh, uh, David Lionel has often pointed to the, the formatting aspect of that. Um, so the, um, so I, I, I just have to say that, and I think we need to, uh, you know, include that in our thinking and in our messaging. So, so that's an, another point. Um, someone earlier mentioned something about sovereignty. Um, I, we could do a whole series of sessions about that. But I, I, I just wanted to say one thing that I heard recently from Chuck Woolery that I thought was brilliant, um, that, that Chuck said, you know, that, that the problem, that, it, that a problem we haven't articulated is that sovereignty is being used in a way now to trump, no pun intended, human rights. So sovereignty is, is being elevated above human rights. In our message, what we, you know, it, it, it's, it's Chuck's contention that human rights needs to be above sovereignty. So that's what we, World Federalists, protect. We're about human rights. 
when you have sovereignty, hey, you got dictators. You know, if you have absolute sovereignty, you've got license for dictators to do genocide. You know, so um, so the, the the real thing that you know what Chuck is suggesting is is our main selling point is is a world federation will be the protector of human rights on a global scale, and I've never heard anyone articulate it in that way. And I just have to say, I think it's brilliant. Uh, Bob, and, I think it's on the in the seventh question for presidents, for oh, presidential great. candidates. The seventh question is just exactly about what you're commenting on. Cool, cool, great, and uh, thank you. And the, the last thing I want to say is, um, is uh, I, I'm sorry, I want to make sure I, I pronounce your name right. Is it Barat? Yeah, Barat. Yeah. Yeah. Terrific. That that. Um, you know, we, we've had, you, you, you may or may not be aware of this, but recently from a number of directions, we've been having the conversation about like, do we as an organization, you know, do we critique, do we criticize, do we point out flaws or negatives in, in policies, institutions, people, et cetera, or do we just talk about our vision? Do we just talk about the positive? And I think that that's a conversation that, that's really worth having. I want to make one point about that from all of the, uh, the reading I've done over the last year about social movements and movement building, that a, a big point, and I'm a, I'm a positive guy. I mean, I, I really like to point to that, but I, I saw something that I think is, is worth really considering, that a lot of that, that, that in the literature on social movements, they say what gets a social movement to start to really ignite it is that, you know, people are suffering. And if you look back at, let's say, the women's movement, you know, that uh, I'll use that as an example, that often women, this is, you know, going back to the 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, felt that, oh, the problem is me. You know, I'm not a good wife. You know, I'm not this. I'm, I'm inadequate. What can I do? My, my, I'm not happy. My, you know, what's wrong with me? What, what makes, what ignites people to action is that when they see it's not me, it's the structure. There's something in the, in the air, you know, in the structural thing that's a, a cultural oppression, you know, and you could use various words. But, but once people make that connection of the personal suffering, to the overall structure, the, the, uh, the you know, in, in this case, you know, male dominant patriarchy, blah, 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 blah. In, um, you know, in other movements, it may be other things that that's what provides the personal motivation for people to jump in and get involved. Otherwise people could know all about the problem, about climate change, about this, you, you name it. But when they, when they make the connection of their own suffering to that, that that's the motivator. And when I read that, it's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, what, what else will get you, you know, out of your house and doing something, you know? Um, so I think we have to do that. I mean, I, I agree with that, with that um, observation. And I think it's important that people see that, um, you know, whether it's their struggle, you know, people working three jobs because they can't spend, pay college for their kids and they're going, oh my God, I'm not working enough or you know, people are, you know, not getting the health care. Oh, my God, I'm going to lose my job, lose my house. You know, no, no, it's not you. <laughs> it's not that you're not working hard enough. It's the system. And we, we, have to, uh, we have to identify that. We have to connect people's personal pain and suffering to the system and to, to in order to, to ignite the fire of their own personal motivation. So I think that does take critique, you know, that does take education to have people make that connection. And in addition to just, because people will say, oh yeah, well, it sounds great. World Federation, uh, good luck, <laughs> have fun with it, you know? But it's, when, it, it's the part when they see their own suffering that gets them moving on it. So anyway, so that, that's the point I, I want to say, and I thank you for bringing it up. Okay, okay I'm done, we, thank Ron you. Ron Gossip has a comment. We, I should note, we have only about 10 minutes left, sure. and I think that it would be useful to discuss what Donna suggested about Appendix 3 as the part of the book that we had not discussed at our last session. We had a pretty comprehensive discussion of the book itself in our last session, but not of that. So, mm -hmm. um, Ron and then Donna. 
Well, I want to make another comment, and that has to do with the order of the questions for the presidential candidates, because one of the points I wanted to make today is that the seventh question, which I just mentioned, I believe to be the first question. Do you think that U.S. foreign policy should aim to protect the human rights of all the human community and not just the rights of U.S. citizens. That goes right along with the point that was just made about what we should be focused on. Idana? Okay, I'll, Ron, I'll make a note of that and fix that. That's a good idea. Um, I was just going to go back to Appendix 3 um, and also tie it into what Bob was talking about, about sovereignty, because that, is, to me, that is what Appendix 3 is about. It is about yes. sovereignty. And it is about, if I, uh, in my book, which is the blue version, uh, oh, yeah. on page 176, he says, sovereignty of the people must stand above the nation so that under it, each nation may be equal, just as each individual is equal under the law in a civilized state. So I think, but Bob, when you say sovereignty, you were talking national sovereignty, I Correct. suspect. Mm -hmm. But actually, the point is, sovereignty comes from the people. And the people have to give their sovereignty to the nation in order for it to work. And it is individual sovereignty that is kind of the, the heart of it all. And then on, on page 179, he says, what a gain it would be to transfer certain aspects of our sovereign rights from national bodies to universal bodies that are equally democratically elected and controlled in order to apply and execute law for the regulation of human relationships in the international field. And I tying it now back to what Dave Evans has said is that I think I think what Dave was suggesting is is the whole thing about talking about national sovereignty maybe is not really the issue in the modern world, although Chuck Woolery was suggesting perhaps it is, but that maybe it's just trying to say, look, we gotta we've got to recognize China could take over if we don't get the world organized in a better way then China's going to do it. And so, like, kind of cut to the chase. That's how I see it. Anyway, that's all I was going to say. Other comments about um, the Appendix 3? Um, you can think about while Bob responds here. Okay. Well, just, just a word on sovereignty. Um, we, we have to be careful because there is something in the United States, and maybe international now, called the Sovereign Citizens Movement. Um, I don't know a lot about it, so I might be mischaracterizing it, but I believe those people uh, it could have been in Wyoming or whatever that took up guns and sat like they went into a wildlife refuge and took over a, a hut there or, or not a hut. They took over the, the visitor center and barricaded themselves in and whatever. Uh, I believe they were part of the sovereign citizens movement, which is more like an anarchist movement. Uh, is my understanding. And they, um, you know, they're advocating you don't have to listen to the government. You don't have to because we're sovereign citizens, you know. So, so that, the, 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 that terminology has another meaning in our culture. And we just have to uh, learn about it so that we don't use it unmindfully and end up sending signals to the wrong people and being misheard and misinterpreted and all that stuff. Thank you. Very good point. Um, Other comments about the, um, the, the appendix by Reeves? Uh, Bharat? Yeah, I don't have specifically about, append, you know, three, but in general, I, I'd like to bring out a point, namely, if you look at historically cultures that have survived and thrived, they always had besides the sort of intellectual and philosophical take, which I feel what we are all about here, uh, and action, you know, coming out of it, there has always been ritual, you know, festivals and entities like that, which brought people together and made them feel a connection with each other. 
And I personally feel that those are the kinds of opportunities as if we can create and develop a kind of a sense of globalness. And that's why climate issues, which are obviously global, affects everyone. The media picks up, the, the whole movement occurs. Similarly, peace and so on has that same kind of an impact. So I just want to suggest that an opportunity is coming along. Uh, September 21st is a you know, UN peace day. And this also is the 150th anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. So we in Minnesota are organizing along with all the peace organizations, and there are lots of them, and community organizations to have an event and a march. And I'm just thinking that perhaps, you know, uh, CGS and uh, I, I guess the World Federation uh, community, if we can create a sort of a overall uh, awareness and, and participate in such and, and allow in those informal conversations where you meet with people who normally wouldn't be part of this and get a discussion going. And, and those are the kinds of things I've found, like in issues related to ending malnutrition and infant health and, and poverty and maternal health out 10,000 miles away. Very few people associated with it. Uh, am I talking too much? I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Huh? I'm just your phone. You know, that's where I find a lot of empathy. And not only that, people support us on the project because of that. So this is just a suggestion. And I'm sorry, Gail, I don't have specific aspects on Appendix 3, OK? Anybody else on Appendix 3? We're, we have just several minutes. Anyone else in general? I do have a general comment I, regarding sovereignty. I have some general. And that is that sovereignty sometimes, I mean, that human rights sometimes is used as a weapon. It's used as a weapon for propaganda with targets of people like us, progressives who care about human rights. It's used to uh, lure us into supporting wars of aggression that are characterized as protecting the human rights of, of people in other countries. The prime example of this was Libya, where um, you know, NATO uh, went in and uh, destroyed Libya, which had the highest standard of living in Africa under Gaddafi until it was completely destroyed. Uh, so we need to be careful about that when we hear, hear these appeal to human rights is it legitimate or is it just something to lure us into doing something that the um you know another war of aggression uh jim stack jim um i agree with what gail said and that uh, deserves another discussion i wanted to tell two people, people two facts about planet hood that you not might not be aware of one is that we haven't talked about the key role of maybe we have, of Ken Keyes. Was he discussed? Ken oh, not Keyes, much, no. the co-author. OK, Ken Keyes is the reason why this is written in simple English. Ken Keyes wrote a book called The Hundredth Monkey in 1982 about nuclear war at the height of the anti-nuclear war movement. And he had the same tactique of one book costs $5 and 10 books cost $10, <laughs> uh, which helped the book go viral. Um, and Benjamin Ferenc by himself writes more like a lawyer. Um, and it's Ken Key's readability that really helped this book. The second thing was Ken Key's device of 10 books for $10 or $20. A third thing is that there's a fellow in Massachusetts who runs ODT Maps who gave $10,000 back in 1990 so that a lot of copies could be printed. And so these are some of the reasons why the book uh, got out there and we need to be aware of them in, in further outreach. These neither left nor right, but just marketing techniques. Um, 
And uh, on the questions for candidates, this is a little bit unrelated. I would hope that climate has elevated. I looked at the questions and they're very oriented towards those of us who lived through 1960 to 1990, where peace was one of the main questions, either Vietnam or nuclear war. And for younger people, I wish they did, but they really don't get nuclear war or nuclear power. When I was at the Netroots Conference at Con uh, Convention of 2,000 people in DC in my time there, I went to the nuclear workshop and there were 20 of us. And we were just amazed that so few of the other 2,000 people weren't in our workshop. So climate is, uh, is, needs to be elevated. Thank you. If I could respond, I'd like to respond to Jim about that. So Jim, our thought was that there are lots of questions about climate that are coming out where we were trying to raise questions that aren't being asked. Right. So that's why maybe climate doesn't have a, a high enough presence is because we were trying to bring forth other topics. But perhaps if you have a question about climate that nobody else is asking, then we could add it. Okay, it is 12.30, uh, 1.30 Eastern time. I've been highlighting uh, the Eastern time because the majority of you are on the Eastern time uh, schedule. But uh, anyway, um, so I, unless there are other conclusive, uh, conclu concluding thoughts, um, I think we should adjourn. Um, oh, I wanted to say two quick things. Uh, okay. Happy happy birthday, whenever the last one was, to Ben Ermston, and uh, and our and our other very oldest members. Uh, uh, thanks. That's it. And to remind you, you can find the first discussion, which discusses is a very good, I think, and substantive discussion of the book um, at the last. Uh, book club meeting on our website and this um, where on the website I couldn't find well it. currently it is under resources events and you go to the uh, information about today's book club is where it is but um, but we're going to need to move that because this event is now over so I don't know where it's going to be next but right now that's where it is if you go to resources, events, and then click on today's event announcement. And the, this, and, this discussion that we've had today is also, has also been recorded. So that'll be up there sometime in the near future. So, Gail, can we thank you for hosting this? Yes, oh, thank you, Gail. Oh, <laughs> and make note of the next, get your books for the next book we'll be discussing, Zaveda's book which is um, the, by Zaveda Mani Ewing, The Idea of World Government from Ancient Times to the 21st no, Century. No, building no, a world no, 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 federation. no, I'm sorry. The, uh, building a world, world Federation, the Key to Resolving Our Global Crises, 2015. You can get it on Amazon in book form or um, um, Kindle or on your Kindle. On Kindle, right? So, and I'll send you. I'll, I'll contact Zaveda regarding the twenty first to see if that is, a, that is an option for her. Um, and um, we'll plan to have our next meeting either September fourteen or twenty first, depending on what you know what people's schedules are. No meeting in August. Right. No meeting in August. Right. By the way, are there people here who are not on the book list that because uh, I send there's a book e-list and I'm wondering if some of you are not on it. Jim Barton, are you on it? Oh, OK, good. He's on it. OK, because I suspected um, mm -hmm. Melanie uh, Bennett contacted me to say that i mean it sounded like she wasn't on it barrett are you on it i'm not sure <laughs> you, you, you're not uh, okay yeah. so how, I how would they know <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you everybody for a really um substantive and in, interesting and and useful uh couple of discussions on 
planet Earth. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Gail. Bye. bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Bill.